Shalise and welcome to Coffee Talk Tuesday. And I am here today with, of course, my lovely co-host Trip. Hi, Trip. Uh, wait, let's get the mug up there. How about that? I am perfectly centered. Cheers. Beautiful. <laughs> I, you know, I take this out to bars and restaurants everywhere I go, and and so far people are big fans of yours. Oh well, yeah, of course they are. <laughs> Especially when people aren't in bars and restaurants, but be that right. Exactly <laughs> right. I was gonna say, do you just stand outside and pretend like there's a bunch of people there? Or hey, our show two weeks ago with your friend who owns the bar in South Jordan gave me a lot of ammunition. West Jordan. West, West Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, because <laughs> all my friends who are to the right of, let's say, whatever, tell me that uh, the small business money is easy to find, and I go, no, no, no. These businesses are having trouble, and I hope your friend yeah. is has gotten some money in because she seemed like a great boss and hopefully she can pay her employees. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. She's, I think, putting in all the applications and stuff. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. I hope so. But, I can't wait till those things get open. I know, right? Me too. Oh, which is one of the reasons why we have Steph on today. Hi, Steph. Stephanie Isla. <laughs> Hello. Hello, hello. So she was on our show before when I was just doing it out of my home. Well, now I guess I'm still technically doing it out of my home again. <laughs> but oh, when, I was, when I was going solo. And I wanted to bring her back on because since our last show, I've actually been through her program, her 90-day program. And she was an incredible coach to me. And so I just wanted to bring her on to give a little motivation and inspiration and um, let her basically talk to us about what she does and why she does it and all that good stuff. So hi, Steph, again. <laughs> hi. Well, hello. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. You're so amazing, and I just love you, and you're so, like, this is just the best time ever. So first off, thanks for letting me be on your show in your home, and in your home and virtually throughout this whole way. It's been an amazing process, and I think that's how the whole world is kind of communicating right now, right? It's like, through virtuality. And I think it's beautiful that we have this source that we can all talk this way. So it's great. Yeah. And I, thanks for being part of my program. Like you're my favorite client of all time. So Ow, stop. <laughs> I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Am I allowed to say I have a favorite? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You, you can say it to each and every one of your clients separately that okay. they're the best. Oh, okay. Yeah. But nobody can ever talk to each other. They're like, okay, yeah. she told me that same thing. I'm like, no, no, no. Stephanie, by the way, where are you right now? I am in my my home. This is my home office right now. Um, this is a picture of me and my little girls. I don't know if you guys can really see it. And then just yeah, so this is where I'm at. I'm in. So I'm where here. where are you in the Salt Lake Valley? Yeah, I'm in. Well, yeah, I'm in Harriman, Utah. So I'm not okay. too far from you guys. Where are you at? Okay, great. We're we're up in uh, South Salt Lake, in beautiful South Salt Lake. But oh. Harriman is wonderful. So what made Shalise such a great? client as it were is that when you're a coach do you call them clients or what do you call them yeah clients um clients friends i'd say anybody who's coachable right like someone who shalice was so coachable and so vulnerable and so willing to take the bull by the horn so to say and just be like okay let's go let's make it happen and to really take action constantly and i think that's what makes someone be able to make shifts and be able to make changes is are you coachable and are you willing to learn? Because some people will hire coaches, but they aren't actually willing to, to do any of the, of the work of it, right? And Shalice was so honest constantly of like, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what I'm feeling. Here's what I want to work through. Here's what I want to process. Here's, here's what, what's happening in my space. And was able for us to go through and dive into everything and then to really think about it and apply the work and apply the steps. And she was so willing to do the work. And that's part of the process is that it's a practice. It's a daily practice every single day, just like in anything else that we do. It's like a diet. Like if you only stick to it five days out of the week, you're not going to get the results that you want. But if you're doing it every single day and consistently showing up and saying, this is working for me, this isn't, then you guys can kind of make a plan and get the right results. And that's exactly what Shalise did. And it's just a beautiful journey to watch her every week, like show up completely different and bring up all this new awareness and like fully dive into it. And it's just amazing. Like I honor her so much for it. It's beautiful. So, yeah. Well, thank and you. Shalise, let me ask you what made Stephanie such a great coach? You know, I loved the fact that she wasn't just a coach, but she really was a friend and is a friend. And 
Um, it's, it's funny when I, when I first heard of Stephanie, I actually heard about her on the radio. She was doing a radio interview. I don't even remember what, what station I was listening to, but I was like, I need to know that woman and I need to have her on my show. And we instantly connected and it was so nice to be able to text her whenever and just be like, I'm going through this right now. I'm dealing with this and have her be my cheerleader and a, a safe place for me to, um, to go and, and know that I'm, I'm not going to be judged. I'm not going to be, um, like ridiculed or looked down on and it was because of the struggles that I was going through and believe me I have a lot of struggles that I go through <laughs> um I I was was able to just always feel like um I could get through it because I had somebody there that was always cheering me on and Stephanie as a follow-up what's the difference between coaches and therapists and consultants kind of explain yeah. that can you yeah that's a great question um, so to me, I would say a coach is someone who's helping you find your own path. Like I'm, I'm a guide, I would say, like, I don't have all the answers for you. I think you have all the answers and I'm just helping you unleash your own answers into yourself and guiding you and coaching you through that direction. And sometimes it might be some tough love and sometimes it might be like, Hey, yeah, go get it, girl. Like I'm your biggest cheerleader. I'm your biggest fan. Like, let's go make it happen. And it's just kind of creating that process of that. I would say a consultant is they're more giving you the exact steps of like, Hey, okay, here's, here's what's wrong. Like they're more the exact problem solver and they're giving you what the solution is. And it's, it's that one method. That's it. Um, and then I'd say a therapist is they're they're going more back into like your childhood trauma and like kind of rebringing stuff up and then diving into that. And while I do help my clients with that, and we talk a lot about their feelings and their emotions, it's not necessarily going back through their past. It's what's happening right now and what has triggered you for that. And can you actually put a word to that emotion? Do you know what it is that you're actually feeling? Because what I find is so often we've learned how to suppress our feelings and our emotions that if I can help coach you into figuring out what that feeling is, what that word is, and then what you want to do with that. I'm never going to make the decision for you. You know exactly what to do. And it's helping you empower yourself to trust yourself enough that, Hey, I can do this. I, I it's like kind of a sounding board. Like, yeah, does that make sense for you? Does that look right for you? And can I offer you some advice or can you think of it this way? And I think a coach helps you see it from all perspectives, like a, a football coach, right? They, they watch all the games. They see how all the players are playing. They're like, hey, I watched you from here, from this angle. Here's how you can step up. Here's how you can be better. Even in basketball, you, you go back and rewatch the film. And that's kind of how I view myself as a coach is I'm talking to my clients. We're going back and rewatching their film of what they're going on currently. I'm helping them see it from all angles and talking from all perspectives, helping them see that viewpoint and then helping them decide and guiding them to whatever that answer is that's best for them that makes sense. That's a great answer. Should everyone have a coach? I believe everyone should have a coach. I have a coach. I think everybody should always have a coach. I think that it helps hold you accountable. I think that's the biggest thing that most people are looking for is the, the accountability piece. And oftentimes we think of it as a weakness that we have to have someone like help push us or motivate us. But in fact, I think it's it's you saying, I, I will do this. I will make this happen. That makes you be the best you to say, hey, I know that this is where I need a coach at. And maybe it's financially, maybe it's with nutrition, maybe it's with your emotions, maybe it's like totally with your whole life encompassing or relationships, but we all struggle in different areas. And so why not seek someone to help you be your best in that area and coach you through that? Like, I, I think that's the best thing that you can do. And it's not weakness. It's you finding the best you and seeing from a different perspective. And it teaches you to grow and heal and become something that you never thought you were able to. The other thing that I love about coaching is that I feel like I'm really just a, a light, like a, a mirror for someone to be who they really want to be, but it's giving them the permission until they can give themselves the permission. And I'm like, yeah, go, you got this, make it happen. <laughs> and then they're like, I do have it. Let's go. I'm like, yeah, you had it all along. You just had to see it. So it's like, you're, you're a guy, like you're, you're shining this light on them until you finally have that. And they see the light in them, right? It's like a eureka moment. It's like when you teach, do you have kids? No. Trip? Okay. No. You don't have kids. Oh, uh, okay. Well, so you I'm not allowed. Your... It was the courts and we won't get into it. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Well, you can cut it then. Never mind. Um, okay, let me ask you this. Have you ever taught someone something? Yes, I taught Shalise how to disrespect me on a podcast. 
<laughs> which okay. she does constantly. Well, Before you got on, it was a trip bashing show. I'm, I'm <laughs> a horrible woman. <laughs> I'll try to coach. I need a coach. <laughs> Well, you know, that wasn't part of our, our plan. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's but the reason is like, it's like a eureka moment, right? Like, so think of some time, uh, go back to a memory of yours. Maybe you taught someone something or you mentored someone in something and you saw like that switch and then they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, I can do this. And it's just like, you're shining a light for someone until they can grab the light themselves. And they're like, oh, I can do this. And you're, that's like the permission. That's like the power. That's, that's why my company is called Powerhouse is that every single person is a powerhouse. You're just shining the light in their house until they can see it themselves. And they're like, I can light up my own house. Let's go. I'm like, yes, you can. <laughs> and my philosophy is a little different because a lot of coaches make it to where you always have to need them. Like that you're like, your success is always with the, with them, right? Like to me, that's not it. Like you should be able to have the tools and to go spread your wings and fly. You shouldn't have to always need me. And so my coaching philosophy is a little different in that where a lot of coaches kind of have like steps of constantly always having to have them. And to me, it's like, I want to give you the tools and I'll always be here to support you. And we can always reconvene at any time, but I want to, I want you to see that you have it in you go do it. Well, and that's what's so great about you, Steph, is that, that that's actually exactly what you did. And I think that, that safety piece that I was talking about a lot of times, I mean, I've had, I've had coaches and therapists and counselors, and I've done a lot of energy work and all this stuff that we can get into. I mean, Holly was on our show and, you know, she does the drums and everything. Like I, I've done all of that. And what's special about you and what was unique about you is that you were more, let's set up these, these tools for you. And I felt safe enough with you to be able to say, you know what, I am struggling doing this. Like there is something that that's holding me back and, and all of those things. And and being able to work through that and really set up a pattern. And now finally at the end of our 90 days, I was like, I got this now, like this is now. And I mean, I had to get, you know, there was things that I had to get rid of, sacrifices that I had to make. And, and I mean, the, the quarantine thing here is <laughs> actually yeah. what, what kind of propelled me. But then I was like, but I have these tools already. So now, being alone, you know, a lot, I mean, I need people to, to thrive. And so being able to like really dive into myself and have those tools set up for me already has really helped me through this isolation period. So thank you for that. I'm so glad to hear that. Yes. Thank you for that. And I just love that you have that. And that's, that's like, then the next step is sharing that process. Right. And you're so good at that too. Is like you share what you learn. And that's one thing I like to teach my clients is like, go into this with what can I learn and how can I reteach it? And then that way you're always practicing it and really understanding that it's not like all of a sudden after 90 days or 60 days or whatever, we end up deciding that it looks like for you that you're like, Oh yeah, I'm a, okay. My whole life is different. And like, I can do all these things It's that you now have all the tools in your tool belt to be able to be successful and to be able to say like, Oh, here's what's going on. Here's what's triggering me. Oh, yep. I'm aware to that. And here's the tool I need to practice this. And then realizing that it's a constant practice. There is no magic pill to find self-love and happiness or to get abs. Because if there was, like, can we just all please get that? <laughs> but it's not. It's a practice every single day. And it's helping give ourselves grace through that, too. It's like, oh, okay, like, this is something that it's a habit that I have to create. And that's the base root of my program is, is exchanging habits for habits. What habits do you want to get rid of? And what habits do you want in place of that? And giving the tools for that and then creating the boundaries to be able to maintain them. Yeah. And, and it's a great process and a great program. And when we come back from this short break, I want to dive more into that program that you have. Okay, perfect. Let's do it. All right. Welcome back to Coffee Talk Tuesday. My name again is Shalise and this is Tripp and we're with the lovely Stephanie today. Hello. Yay. So yeah. before we went on break, we were talking about your program that you have set up. You have, don't you have a couple different programs that you do? Yes, I do. I do a group coaching program. I have a one-on-one -on -one program. Uh, there's two different versions of that. I have a 90 day program and a six month program. Um, my program that's already been written, I created is called Awaken Your Inner Powerhouse. And then I have another program that's 90 days that 
me and my client will kind of tailor specific to whatever their goals are and figure out like, okay, here's what, here's what your goals are. Here's how we can accomplish them over the next 90 days. Now let's go and make that happen. And then my group coaching is a four week program with typically about 10 women in that group. And we meet every Thursday night, we do a group call and it's really learning the base route about self love and what self love is for you. And part of that process and the reason it's in a group is to help women learn how to show up for other women. I find that all women compare ourselves to every other woman and we're judging other women and we're trying to live up to this perfect mom, this perfect wife, this perfect, whatever woman's supposed to look like. And, um, cause we're always judging ourselves. We're judging other women and we're showing up insecure with that. And we're not able to show up fully and like love women and celebrate women and help them shine and be their best. And so part of the reason it's in a group is to help women learn how to see each other. And what I mean by that is how to respect each other and honor each other, not judge each other, not compare what season you're in, but fully celebrate one another and love each other and learn how to become friends. Like, I don't feel like that's something that we're really taught. Like I don't allow judging. I don't allow gossip. I don't allow any of that. If you're a powerhouse, that just doesn't wait, wait, work. wait, 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 wait. How do you have a podcast? Those are the backbones <laughs> of every podcast judgment oh my god gossip saying horrible things <laughs> we're gonna kick yeah. you out of the fraternity you're too positive oh no i never got invited that's part of the problem so i, I just created my own fraternity i didn't like the one that was going on okay. uh, so so you are a very yeah. positive person what i am a very positive person what a little gossip never hurt anyone did it um i think it does because i think it's a seed within you that you plant to constantly gossip right and for me i i used to gossip all the time and like i had friendships that were literally built out of just gossip like i used to work in corporate america and corporate america is all about gossip right like you're sending ims like did you see so and so i can't believe this person did this and like it's that's every every meeting after a meeting you're like oh that was the stupidest waste of time stupidest meeting so and so such an idiot like i can't believe they would say that they don't even know that's all gossip right and that all that is doing is rooting in you negative energy, negative life, like power that you don't need to have in you. And I realized that I was like, I had friendships that were literally built out of us gossiping about other people. And after those conversations were done, we had nothing else to really talk about. It was like, oh, how are the kids? Okay, cool. Well, okay, bye. bye. Like, and then our conversation would only come back if we had shit to talk about someone basically. And I was like, that is not the person I want to be. And nor do I ever want someone to come to me and think that I'm going to say what they're saying to me to someone else. Like, I just don't want to be that person. And part of that was me speaking my truth. And I have a rule I live by that's living with integrity and integrity means that you can't gossip. And so that's a practice of mine. That doesn't mean that I don't fail sometimes, but, um, yeah, that's, that's why I choose to not have that. And my podcast, we don't gossip. It's all just truth. And I'd rather have someone speak their truth to me to their face than ever gossip or feel like they can't have that safe place to come and be like, hey, you hurt my feelings. Hey, this is what's going on. Like that kind of thing. There was a great pillow that a society matron by the name of Amy Vanderbilt had that said, if you don't have anything good to say about someone, come sit next to me. And... <laughs> Oh, Trip, so, as soon as I think that you're going to say something smart. nice. No, 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 no. I thought you were getting ready to quote Bambi. No, 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 no. <laughs> so what, where did you work in corporate America? How did you transition from being a corporate maven into being a coach? I love that. Um, I used to work at Prestige Financial. I was the vice president there. Uh, I worked there for 10 years. I worked my way up um, as a collector, up to a manager, up to the VP. And that was, that whole world was based upon gossip and within that, in that realm of it. And that was part of like my life switch. So I got divorced. Um, I hired a coach. I saw a therapist. I did all this, my own inner work. And I really became a completely different person. And I was like, I, I finally love myself. I'm proud of the person that I am. I love what I do every day um, and I want to teach people how to, how they can embody that and how they can do that. And so I started hosting events, uh, free events for women to come and like to learn and learn how they could show up for other women and how they could build friendships and how they could learn how to grow their mind and find self-worth and find self-love and honestly learn how to forgive themselves. Cause I had a lot of shame. I had a, had an affair in my marriage and that's what ended up getting divorced from and that was a lot of gossip about that too right and so i realized when people started gossiping about me 
how much I didn't want someone to gossip about me. And that was part of my awakening process of that. It's like, I would never want someone to speak my story when it's not their story to tell. And that was part of that. So I, um, throughout my process of just becoming who I am now, I started hosting these events and I started realizing like, this is what I was created for. And so last year I went into my CEO's office and I, I sat down and I started crying and he's like, what's wrong? Is everything okay? Like what's going on? I'm like, yeah, um, I'm giving you my month's notice and I'm going to leave and I'm going to start my own company and I'm going to swim in. And he's like, wow. Okay. So do you have like a hundred clients or like, what, what does that look like for you? I'm like, no, I don't, I don't have one. And he's like, so you're, you're going to leave your salary. You're a single mom and, and you're going to go start a business. He's like, Stephanie, like, let's talk about this. I'm like, yeah, I have to do this. Like, this is what I was created for. And if I don't go do this, like, I'll never know what I can do. And, um, I still always get emotional about it, but it was, it was like the most powerful thing I ever did for me. And, um, he, my boss sat down, he's like, I'm 67 years old and you just taught me what courage looks like and feels like. And I know that you're going to change every single life. So go do it. And I finished out the rest of my projects for that month. I cashed up my 401k and here I am. And I started my business. So yeah, that's how it all happened. And have you ever regretted it? No, never once. I've definitely had moments where I'm like, what am I doing? Why, like, what is happening? Like, how did I, how did I talk myself into this? Is this really the best idea? I've struggled. Um, I've, I've, I've learned more hustle than I ever thought I had. I've grown more internally than I ever thought I could, but I would never, ever go back. And I will, it's like, it's been the best part of my life. It's literally amazing. So, yeah. Wow. What a story. How many clients do you have now? Um, so right now I have three one-on-one -on -one clients and I have 10 clients in my group coaching program. And I only like to have five one-on-one -on -one clients at a time. That's what I found for me works best to hold like the emotional space for them and the support and the love and the guidance. And then I do my group coaching every other month and that's 10 women that go into that. And then I do a lot of just like clarity calls and, um, different like support. And I, I work with a lot of companies too. I do, I do like culture training with them and help them learn how you can be visionary and see that kind of stuff. So, wow. Yeah. And this, this is really an amazing story. And how did you find Shalice or vice versa? Well, that's what I said. Yeah, yeah. I, I mentioned it before. I heard her on the, the news uh, or the radio. And, what, what, yeah, um, what radio station? I'm intrigued by that. I don't uh, know. 97 one. So yeah. 97 one happened on the radio because of my, so. I had done a fitness show and they wanted me to come and kind of talk about how I got into that. And then they, when they started talking to me about it, they're like, Oh wait, like, so you used to be a vice president of this company and like all this stuff. I'm like, Oh yeah. They're like, will you come and talk about that story? I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And <laughs> it was just that I'm like, to me, it, that the question that I had to ask myself was, cause it's like, it's scary, right? To leave a company, especially for everything that's going on right now. Like there's all these people who are losing their jobs, who companies are closing, small businesses are struggling. And I think to me, it's like, okay, well, what, it, why is this happening for you? And part of like my divorce and everything like that, that all happened for me to be where I'm at today. All, every mistake I did, every struggle that happened that happened for me to wake me up, to be the person that I am and everything that we're all going through right now, this is happening. Honestly, I believe for us to help you step back and like, maybe you would, maybe you would never leave a company and go start a business, but you've had this amazing idea that you're for the last 10 years. And now you just got laid off. Go, go start your business. Hell yeah. The world just worked out for you because you were too afraid to go do it. And like, now you can go make it happen. Right. And for me, I had to start asking my question, like, what am I really afraid of? What am I really afraid of? And the fear was, it wasn't about if I'll make money. Cause like at the end of the day, I could always go find a job. I could go, I could go serve pizza. I could go do whatever. I'll make, I'll make it out. I'll figure it out. But and the fear was like, what if I'm not enough? Like, who's going to want to talk to me? Who's going to want to listen to me? And then I had to remember, like, if I can't believe in me, no one else can, can believe in me. And that was the day that I literally, for a year before I quit my job, I had been writing down, I'm a coach. I am a powerhouse. I'm going to change lives. I'm created for this. And finally that morning I was like, yep, this is who I am. And that's the day I walked in my boss's office and said, I can do it. And the fear was I'm not enough. And I put that fear, slapped it in the face and said, I'm enough right now. Let's go. And so any of you guys that are struggling with like, well, I want to try this. I want to do this. What's happening. I'm so afraid. Like try to look at it as well, what's happening for you. What do you get to learn from this? What is the gift right now that you're being presented with? 
and see if that helps you shift at all and change. Well, and that's what I found too. After every tragedy or every trauma, everything that we go through in life, it's always that next step that that we get to that next level of transformation or whatever like we have to dig deep and and find that and and actually with everything that's going on right now like i i'm a go 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 person like i don't slow down and this is forcing me to slow down and really do that inner work that that you and i actually worked so hard on to get to that yes. there was a lot of me that wasn't I wasn't at that point where I could really take a step back and be like, okay, now, now where, where is it in me that I can pull out that I really need to, to find? What is it? And I mean, that's something that, that I've learned years and years ago though, too, is that from everything that happens, that's terrible in our life, there's always something good that hap that comes from it. And there's always that underlying reason. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with that. Yeah, 100%. So Tripp, where are you going to dig deep? Um, <laughs> well, <laughs> in my backyard, I might have buried some money before this whole uh, situation started. You're, you're going to go but, on a pirate hunt? <laughs> well, I, I think that you'll both agree that men are probably much less uh, willing to listen when it comes to things about our feelings, caring about other people. Men are just, we are different and we aren't very good at this stuff. So then Tripp, I have a question for you. Yes. How would you suggest women approach you that like, I mean, you're married, you, you have, at, at, you know, I was, I'm sure I these conversations. The morning, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, it is hard. Like men and women are different. And I've learned that I've, I've had relationships and things and, and, um, I'm actually getting to this point where sometimes where I realize that those differences are exactly what we need sometimes to balance each other out. And we don't all have to be the same. And that's what makes it, it beautiful. And, and I mean, no one, no, is no, the same it anyway. primarily makes it a pain in the butt. Uh, well, that too. <laughs> It is a huge pain in the butt that you guys are so different from us. And when it comes to our feelings, we just don't have them. We are pretty much base <laughs> grunting. Uh, that's yeah. us. That's what guys are. No, you have them. You just avoid them and suppress them. And, <laughs> and it's really obnoxious sometimes. You need to work on that emotional intelligence every once in a while. Yeah, I am not a Mensa Keep person when it trip. comes. Yeah, I'm not Mensa. I'll guarantee you. <laughs> hey, Stephanie, tell us about your pod. Where do we find your podcast? Um, yeah, it's called Just Talking. You can find it on you can find it on iTunes. You can find it on Anchor. You can find it on Spotify. It's all over the place. That's a great. How'd you get that name? Um, because I just want to be just talking about all the things. And no, but that, talk you were lucky to get that name. I mean, I. Shocking. I had to use quotations around it for just talking, but it actually, it got brought up because, um, so I started my podcast a year ago and I was dating this guy and we got into this argument about stuff and he's like, well, we're not even dating. We've just been talking. And I was like, oh, we're just talking. And I was like, oh, I don't think so. That's not what this is. And so, um, I, I brought my podcast out to bring self love and awareness into dating about like how just talking but like you guys, can, like people feel like they're in this full relationship and these expectations of that. But then people get too afraid of the commitment. So like, oh, we're just talking, and it's like the whole world of like just talking and being on Bumble or being on Tinder, and like you can just swipe and just talk to whoever, so you don't have to be fully committed. And so that was kind of how my podcast got started with that, and it was teaching women how to show up in that space and have the right mindset and like know what you're going through. So a lot of my podcasts we talk about like relationships and how men can have feelings and emotions. So Tripp, I'd love for you to listen to it and see if it can help you with it. Um, and just to check into that and like learn how to be honest with ourselves and to be honest about everything. And then that kind of stemmed into just talking about all of the things throughout all of life. So. Well, it sounds like a great podcast. And I think there's probably one or two guys out there that would listen. <laughs> I mean, they're probably gay, but <laughs> certainly not heterosexuals. There might be. There's a lot of awesome people I've had on my podcast. It's been pretty fun. I love it. And it's just a good time. No, and, and podcasting is one. And you are uh, great on camera. You're great on mic. So I bet your podcast is really amazing. 
and I will give it a listen. Well, so especially I, when I'm going to be on it because I'm going to be on it in a few weeks here talking about need, my book. Do I need but Kleenex you're... while I be crying? Of course you'll be crying, Trip. Okay. <laughs> We're going to see a tear from you by the end of this podcast if you like it or not. <laughs> Yes, you don't have to squeeze lemon in your eye. Just something to get you to cry a little bit. Okay, yeah. well. Uh, but guys, I'm, my next show, just show you what a guy I am. The next show I'm going to be doing at the top of the hour is a boxing podcast. That's what guys do. We grunt and hit each oh. other. I like it. I like that's, it. That's what guys, you guys are much better than we are. Well, no way. We're all in it together. And actually, I would say guys are as emotional, if not more emotional than women. And it's oh, just like, sure. them I agree yeah. with that too, because I have a lot of men in my life that are way more Wait, 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 you have lots of men woman. in your life? Yes, of course I have lots of men in my life. <laughs> well, let, let's discuss this someday. <laughs> How many men do you have in currently? <laughs> well, <laughs> none, because obviously I'm in quarantine. <laughs> That was a that was a quick answer response. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, there was some hesitation there. The only uh, Stephanie, whatever. the only time You're my wife get me in the doghouse. Yeah. <laughs> the only time my wife has seen me cry was for a very emotional thing. Uh, when Kyle Busch won the NASCAR championship, I cried. <laughs> so that's that's a real man. Well, like Trip, thank you for showing our viewers what a real man is. Okay, uh, no Thank problem. Thank you, Stephanie, for being on our show and yes. doing yes. everything that you do to help people transform and change their lives and become better and, you know, all the little things that, that you You're do to... Light in this world. Oh, well, thank you, and so are you. Trip. you'll get there. Yeah, it's, it's a long journey. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, we... Love to have you on the show again at some point, Stephanie, and I can't wait to be on your show. Trip, yes. I'm glad that your computer worked today and your internet stayed on so you could continue on for the rest of, for the entire show this week. I so. wouldn't have missed this one. I'm no. going to go cry <laughs> before the boxing show. Yes, okay. amazing. All right. See you later. Well, thank Lee. you so much, and we'll see you next yes, week. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.